Okay, so moving on to activity number two, which is to do with spreadsheet software. Uh, let's get started. It says members of staff at the London Hotel have been offered a trip to Hong Kong in August at a reduced cost. They can make monthly payments towards the cost. Frederick has set up a spreadsheet to record the payments. It is saved as trip. Okay, so you should be having this file trip. Uh, just check your folder and see if you do have it with you. Yes, I do have this uh, file trip with me. So uh, the next thing it says is open the spreadsheet trip. Enter task SS1, your name, candidate number, and setter number in the footer of the uh, worksheet. Okay, so let's get started on that. Let's come to, uh, let's open up trip. And uh, let's make it full screen. So we have to go into the footer. So you come to insert, and then you have header and footer. So right now you're on the header. You can see right at the top, you're on the header. You need to go into the footer. So just click on go to footer. And over here, you should type your details, which is task SS1, your name, your candidate number, and your center number. Okay, so once you're done with that, uh, you can go back to normal view. So you can just click on one of these cells and then come to the view tab and click on normal view. Okay, so you can then scroll on to the top. So, how do we uh, then what do we do next? It says Haley Anandale. Anandale has signed up for the trip. She is 28 years old, she has made these payments enter these details on the spreadsheet okay so not too difficult so let's make this column bigger so i'm going to keep the cursor here and double click so it'll auto fit double click it auto fits double click and again it auto fits so over here i enter her first name which is Haley, and then her last name which is anand dale okay uh, and march 150 april 150 may 100 so march 150 150 100 yeah so she's how old she's 28 years old so let's enter this detail as well and let's put a border for this as well okay let's come to the home tab pa past paper hasn't said to put borders i'm just putting it on my own okay you don't have to do that i'm just trying to you know maintain the format it then says sh uh, sort the spreadsheet in ascending order of last name within uh, with a secondary sort of first name in ascending order so there are multiple sorts to be done so initially you're supposed to do the last name and then a secondary sort of first name okay so what I would do is I would uh, select the data like this okay this is the data that needs to be sorted and then I would come to sort and filter and I would come to custom sort so over here what you need to keep in mind is you need to tick this box which means my data has headers so the moment you tick this box, automatically the first row that you selected will not be considered in the sorting. So first name, last name, age, January, February, these are basically your headings. And you do not need that row to get sorted with your data, isn't it? So that is why I came and ticked on this saying that the first row that I have selected is my heading. Do not consider that in the sorting. Okay, keep that in mind. So initially I will be sorting by last name. So let's go ahead and select last name over here. Is it A to Z? Ascending order is A to Z. And then secondary sort. So I'm going to add a level. And my secondary sort is by first name. That too is A to Z. And then let's click on OK. So this is how the sorting has been done. Uh, then it goes on to say format the spreadsheet so that currency values show the currency symbol with no decimal places currency values so currency values age is not a currency value these are all currency values so what you can do is you can right click you can come to format cells and you can tell your computer that this is a currency and tell your computer you want it to have the pound symbol so the pound symbol is over here let's go for UK uh, which is over here United uh, sorry we have to go down all the way over here to United Kingdom uh, decimal places we don't want to we want it to be zero so let's make it zero and let's click on ok so exactly as required by the past paper we have done the next thing it says is all of the data is visible so if any of your columns is too small you know just come over here keep the cursor here double click it will auto fit so all the data would be properly visible uh, then it goes on to say save the spreadsheet as task ss1 uh, let's first save it and then let me talk to you all about the printing so when it comes to saving it as uh, the shortcut key that you can use is F12 
So when you press F12, it the save as dialog box opens up. Uh, make sure you're in your 2015 folder, and then you can change the name to task SS1. Okay, so that's done. And then the next thing it says is print the spreadsheet on one side of A4 showing the data. So let's select our data. This is the data that we need to be printed. And let's use a shortcut key to go into print preview, which is control P. So once you press control P, you can see your data is properly visible. Check, is it fitting one A4 paper? Yes, it is fitting one A4 paper. If it is not fitting one A4 paper for you, you will have to adjust the columns, make them smaller to make them fit. But do not make any of the data hidden. They should all be visible. Worst case, you can come on here and click, oh, sorry, I did not do that. You can come and click over here and say fit sheet on one page. Okay, this is if nothing works for you. Okay, so with that, we have come to the end of task SS1. Okay, let's move on to the second task. Uh, Frederick wants to know the total amount paid by each person. Enter a formula in cell I6 to calculate the total paid by the first member of staff. Okay, so we need to calculate the total made by the first member, which is Karen Anderson. Okay, so uh, we need to add these values, okay, without the age, January, February, March, April, and May need to be added. So we can obviously use the sum function. So you can say equal all functions in uh, Excel starts with uh, the equal symbol so equal sum so sum is the name of the function when you want to add values so equal sum open brackets and say i want to add the values from here all the way to here so from d6 colon h6 which means from d6 to h6 uh, do not forget to close the bracket okay so close it and press enter so the total is coming to 550 pounds then the question paper goes on to say the charge to staff for the trip is stored in cell B3. Enter a formula in cell J6 to calculate the balance left to pay by the first member of staff. Okay. So over here, this is the cost that uh, the staff should be paying. They should all be paying 600 pounds. Okay. And this is how much they have paid so far. Let's put a suitable column heading. Okay. Let's put total paid. Okay, let's wrap text it so it fits the entire cell. Let's make it slightly bigger. And let's uh, wrap text it. Wrap text, okay, center align. Or let's keep it like the other questions as well. Okay, so this is how much they have paid so far. And let's put over here balance to be paid okay this let's make it slightly bigger and let's wrap text this as well okay so this is how much they're supposed to pay this is how much they have paid so we need to do subtraction over here so equal the value that is over here minus the total that has been paid over here now these formulas are going to be replicated okay in the next question they're going to be telling us to replicate these formulas pull it down apply it to the other cells as well now what you need to keep in mind is when I replicate this formula, B3 is going to become B4. Then when again, when I, when I replicate it even further, B4 is going to become B5. B5 is going to become B6. B6 is going to become B7. The same applies with column I. Column I6 is going to become I7, I8, I9, I10, isn't it? But I don't mind, I mean, it's all right for column I row number to change. I6 should become I7 i7 should become i8 i8 should become i9 that should happen however b3 should not change it should always reference to b3 you got it when i replicate the formula i do not want the address of b3 changing i want that to be fixed this is what we call absolute cell referencing where i want one particular cell to remain locked okay so what i do is i select this particular cell address which is b3 and then what i do is i press f4 on my keyboard function key 4 f4 i press it now if you are using a laptop when you press f4 it might be to increase the volume decrease the volume it might be to carry out a specific function so if you are using a laptop you may have to press fn f4 okay somewhere near your spacebar key you will find the fn key so you may have to press fn f4 together okay so look what happens when i press f4 you can see a dollar appears before b which means lock column b and a dollar appears before three, which means lock row number three. So basically B, B3 has been locked. So when I replicate this formula, I6 will keep changing, but B3 will remain the same for every cell. 
okay i hope it makes sense to you so enter the question paper then goes on to say replicate the formula for the other members of staff so what i'm going to do is i'm going to replicate this first okay and then i'm going to replicate i hope you can see where my cursor is from the bottom right hand corner click and replicate okay so this is the balance uh, that each uh, staff member is supposed to pay the next question goes on enter appropriate headings for column i and j we have already done that i and j we already have entered appropriate column headings then the question paper goes on to say uh, edit the footer to show that this is task ss2 so we need to edit the footer so let's uh, come over here insert head and footer let's go to the footer and let's change this to task ss2 let's click on a blank cell view go back to normal view scroll up and uh, then it says save the spreadsheet as task ss2 so i do hope you remember the shortcut key for save as f12 and let's change this to task ss2 and let's click on save okay so uh, that's it for that question okay the next thing it says is it says frederick wants to send a reminder to members of staff who still have to pay 100 pounds or more enter formula in column k to display the text reminder or not needed for each member of staff okay so staff who have a balance of 100 pounds or more the comment reminder needs to appear otherwise not needed should appear where should it appear it should be appearing in this particular column okay so let's put a heading kind of like comment or something okay and let's make this slightly bigger so we are going to enter a formula over here we are we are going to check how much is over here if the value over here is 100 pounds or more automatically over here a comment should come reminder otherwise not needed should appear over here so what we can do is we can use something called an if condition okay so let's come to insert form insert function as you can see where my cursor is insert function and let's locate the if condition so i have used it recently which is why it's over here if it's not visible for you over here you can type it over here and click on go so let's open up the if function okay so the logical test what are we what are we testing what are we checking so i'm checking whether this value the value in j6 okay is it greater than or equal to 100 okay i'm checking whether the value in j6 is greater than or equal to 100 so then my computer is asking me okay what if it's true what if it's 100 or more what do we do so then i tell my computer display the text uh, what do we display we display reminder okay if it is true if it is 100 pounds or more display the text reminder uh, what if it is false what if it is not more than 100 uh, what if it is less than 100 okay what if it's false so then what we display is not needed okay so if it is true display reminder if it is false display not needed so let's click on ok and see what happens as you can see this is less than 100 pounds so automatically not needed has appeared over here let's replicate the formula and see what happens so you can see this is 100 pounds so reminder 125 which is greater than 100 so reminder has appeared over here so our if condition is working all right okay the next thing the question paper goes on to say uh, resave task ss2 let's go ahead and resave it print the spreadsheet on one side of a4 showing the formula okay so right now the data is visible but the examiner now wants us to show the formula not the data so what we can do is we can come to the formulas tab and we can say show formulas so as you can see now the formulas are visible okay but you can see the columns have all got way too big so instead of manually adjusting each of them what you can do is you can come and click over here now all the columns have got selected keep your cursor on one of the columns okay on one, any one of the columns keep your cursor and double click they will all auto fit so you will not have to manually go and do it for each column okay watch i'm going to double click now you can see they are all auto fitting okay <coughs> and uh, you can also see this dotted line which shows that this is the end of the a4 paper so this is going on to two uh, a4 papers let's see is the question paper saying that it should fit one a4 paper make sure the row and column headings are shown 
the row and column heading should be visible so this a b c d one two three should be visible so how do we get that you can come to page layout and you can say headings they need to be printed okay uh, make sure columns i j and k are wide enough to show the complete formula i j and k yes they are quite wide enough to show the entire formula perfect uh, then it says reduce the width of other columns if necessary to ensure that your formula can be read okay so keep in mind they haven't told anything about it fitting one a4 paper but if you want to make this fit one a4 paper there are certain things you can do for example you can make this column smaller okay uh, but still it's going on to two a4 papers in that case if you still want to make it now like i told you the past paper hasn't told that it should fit one a4 paper so you can go ahead and print this on two a4 papers but if you want to know how can i make this fit one a4 paper just keep in mind you can click over here and you can say fit sheet on one page so then your computer will somehow they do certain arrangements and make whatever you have selected fit onto one page okay so make sure you first select what you want to print and then go into print preview control p okay uh, the next thing it says uh, okay so we have now come to the end of task ss2 okay uh, there are still a few more questions uh, in spreadsheet software okay so in the next video we'll move into task ss3